Open up to Joshua chapter 4. I'm going to read one verse, and then we're going to have Pastor Clay come up. We'll pray for the message. But uh, Pastor Clay was sharing with me uh, in one of our leaders' meetings, and he says, Eli, I got the conviction that we just, the Lord's bringing us out, out of the, out of the high school. And and I, I was praying about it. I said, Pastor Clay, I think you're right. And then I went to a young adult study, Daniel Young was teaching. That guy was preaching it out of, out of the word. And, and he, he, he taught on this verse, Joshua chapter 4, verse 18. It says, and when the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant, and when the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. And he asked the question in this teaching. He said, well, why did the Jordan overflow its banks after they had gone through? And he taught and he said, the Jordan overflowed its banks after they had gone through because God didn't want him to go back. He didn't want him to go back to the wilderness. He didn't want him to go back to Egypt. He wanted him to go into the promised land, that God was bringing them out of Egypt, that God was bringing them out of the wilderness in order to bring them into the promised land. That's what Daniel taught, and it was just a real confirmation for me that God's really brought us far as a church. He's brought us far. We've seen miracle upon miracle along the way. We've seen lives changed. In this, in this church. We've seen God do amazing things. We bought this property, I think it's 11 years ago now. This piece of property, it was $1.3 million. Look around. I mean, how many people are here? This this is the people that paid off $1.3 million. That that blows my mind. That's a miracle. I, don't, I can't explain that. And so why did God, why is God giving us all this pressure from the school? You know, they, they want to use it for the for the kids, which is, they're right, they need to use it for the kids. That's the high school's first priority is the kids going to that school. That's their priority. And they've been gracious. We've been meeting there 17, 18 years. They've been so gracious to us. We love the high school. But why is God bringing us out of the high school? Well, God brings us out to bring us in. Bring us to this beautiful piece of property. So I want to encourage you guys, if you don't come out to the prayer meeting tonight, be praying. Be praying for us as a church that we're gonna we're not going to go back to the high school. We're going to save them eight grand that we would have spent on on rent and we're going to put that towards the land we have over i think we have over two hundred thousand dollars that we're that we have for a building on this on this place we need about a million and so we're going to have to take out a loan and the bankers have said wow you guys are you guys are looking good keep it up you guys are looking great and we can we can get you a loan every bank we've gone to has said no we can get a loan so i'm pretty excited so pray for Corey. Corey's our architect he's putting together our building almost done. He's just putting the final, like, how is it going to face? And so hopefully next week, I'm hoping next week I'm going to be able to come up here with a nice big drawing for you guys to see. It's going to be a building that's going to be seating about 126 people with doors that open on the sides. If you, you guys know the Lutheran Church, you can drive past the Lutheran Church right across from Ruby Tuesdays. You see they have the wooden doors on the side that open that allow for some extra seating on the outside. So, I mean, we can't afford AC. <laughs> Have you ever tried to? I just moved into a house that has central like air. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how much money it costs? To <laughs> and that's just my house. <laughs> it feels great though. But we're gonna have some doors. That's. I mean, the breeze is beautiful out here. We're gonna get the breeze blowing right through. It's gonna be perfect for what we need. And then there's gonna be a second building that once we pay off that first building, we're gonna be able to put up a larger second building that's gonna have a bunch of stuff, classrooms, a bunch of stuff inside. So he's finishing up the finishing touches on that. But I want you to hear that the Lord is doing some amazing things. He's bringing us out of the high school in order to bring us into this property. That we're going to be a little tabernacle church for, I'd like to see the ground broken this year. I, I was talking to Mr. San. We pray together every Thursday night, Mr. San and I. And I and I told him, here's the plan. Uh, once once we get the this design, it's going to take two months to get the blueprints. After we get the blueprint, so say he finishes next week, so April, April and May. So in June, we'd get our blueprints. And then we'd file, once we get our blueprints, we file for the permit. And the foundation permit takes three months. So June, July, August, so September-ish, we'd be able to break ground uh, on the foundation, which the foundation is everything below ground. It takes a year and a half to get a building permit. So we're going to try to see about expediting that process um, with some of our construction friends. So hopefully it only takes half the amount of time. But hopefully by the end of this year, we've broken ground. We're putting in a parking lot. We're putting in the foundation. We're putting in the water, electric, sewer, all that stuff. And so be praying for Corey to have wisdom. Be praying for us as leaders to have wisdom. And pray for us as a church 
that God's brought us out, not to destroy us here in, in the wilderness, but to really bring us into his plan for us as Calvary Chapel Central Walk. So it's an exciting time. It's a really exciting time. The leadership is really excited about what God is doing. And so I hope you guys, if you're able to, 6 o'clock tonight, we're going to be just worshiping and praying tonight. And we're going to do that. That's going to be the last Sunday of every month we're going to do that. Uh, just, I, I know there's a lot of food today. But I've already, I, I, on these worship and fasting nights, I've already told the leaders I'm, I'm, I'm fasting. So if you don't see me eating food, it's not because I don't like the food. I love the food, but I've made a commitment that on these worship nights I'm going to be fasting um, because it's important for us to be really seeking the Lord in this real exciting and critical time. So be praying for us as leaders. Be praying for Corey Boss, and let's see what the Lord is going to do. If you have any questions about any of this, I'm always I'm always here. You guys can always come to me, ask me any questions you got. I might not have the answer, but I will find out for you if I don't have the answer. So with that, let's pray. I want Pastor Clay come. He has the word this morning. Father, we do commit all of these things to you. We do thank you for the example that you set for us in the book of Joshua. I thank you for Pastor Clay just in his wisdom and really listening to your voice and just saying, you know what? We shouldn't go back. It would be like us going back to Egypt to go back to the to the high school. Lord, that we need to that we need to go on the property, and that was peaceable with the with all of us as elders. Lord, that you're bringing us out to bring us into what you have for us. And Lord, when Daniel taught that that those the river overflowed, the Jordan overflowed, so that there was no way back for the people, that they had to go into the land, that they had to trust you, that they had to put their faith in you. Lord, that's what we want in our lives. We want to trust you and put our faith in you, that you're doing an amazing work in our midst. And so, Lord, continue that work that you're doing. We've seen it. We've tasted and seen that you are good, and we're excited to see how you're going to continue to show your steadfast love and faithfulness, like Jim was saying in that worship time. So, God, go before us. We do commit ourselves to you. Lord, be with Pastor Clay now. Fill him fresh with your spirit. Lord, speak to us through your word. Lord, we have ears to hear what you would say to your church. So we're excited to see what you're going to do. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. What a privilege and opportunity uh, to speak to you on behalf of the Lord and His Word. Exciting what Pastor Eli was alluding to. And uh, um, what a responsibility, isn't it, you know, for us as leaders to seek the Lord. Um, it's not a matter of just going out and doing your own thing, and, but it's a matter of seeking the Lord, His timing, will his purposes for his glory amen and as leaders you need to pray for your leaders because we have that responsibility of seeking the Lord making decisions I praise the Lord for Pastor Eli and um, the leadership that he has provided especially in this area of uh, making the move but real briefly let me just share with you how um, just let me see well real briefly you know um, how we kind of how the Lord even just spoke to me, you know. Uh, about a month ago, I um, did the Great Aloha Run, and uh, I was sharing with my brother as we as we as we walked. Um, by the way, for us, it's the Great Aloha Walk, right? So, <laughs> as we walked <laughs> the seven and a half miles, we ran the first. Uh, half mile <laughs> but anyway I, I told them our condition with our church I said you know what the high school seems like they're squeezing us out and at that time Castle and Cook sent us um, an approval to extend for the sixth time before we have to build and break ground but they said this will be the last extension so I, I told my brother I said hey, you know what Glenn I said this is a situation we're in and I was kind of sharing with him kind of like a sad story kind of oh man you know kind of bummer you know this is where we are to my surprise he he turned around and he said clay you guys got a great opportunity to lead your church to build faith and to see god doing amazing things and he says you know don't go back to the high school have service on the property where we can begin to trust god by faith and that was on a monday that next Sunday, uh, Justin, where are you? I saw J Justin, are you here? Okay, he's helping the kids anyway. On that Sunday, that same week, 
just then as we were having service up here he pulls up before he pulls up he tells me clay this is the place you're going to have your service and etc etc and what he was sharing with me was almost verbatim with what my brother just told me and during that whole week i already bore witness and here there's confirmation so i shared with eli i says eli i think i believe god's you know uh having having us up here and he said well put in an application because you know they're just kicking us out for three months maybe we can go back to the high school i says eli i don't think uh god's leading us there um no sense fill out the application because this is where god is leading and that is so important to know god's timing god's leading and it's all by faith because we don't you know what is faith the assurance of things hoped for and the uh, confidence of things that are not seen and so by faith this is where we're headed so just pray and we praise god for that um, god is good amen all right um eli just completed the the book of acts uh, last sunday and one of the themes that eli had during this book was 17 7 where there is another king and it is jesus um, there was an uproar in jason's houses where they went and confronted because caesar was the king um, in the first century but these people were saying there's another king jesus and another thing eli kept reinforcing for us is we got to live the king's way right we got to live the king's way and jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords amen? amen and this is for us today we need to we need to live the king's way today we're going to talk about what it means to be saved our title today is how do i know that i'm saved and i'm going to go to heaven you know we go up to church for so many years but how do we know that we're actually saved and we're going to go to heaven i've heard people ask the following questions over the years can i lose my salvation other people ask how much can i sin and still get to heaven although these are good questions they're the wrong questions when someone asks these questions what they're really asking is what is the minimum requirement that i need to make it into heaven nowhere in the bible do we see what's the minimum requirement to get to heaven and then you can just live your own life the way we want right <laughs> but let me share with you a story years ago this church used to before we met at the high school we we're meeting at pibc and pibc has been so gracious to this church they let us park this trailer every there uh, during the week and we just go pick it up bring it here and then we go and return it so praise the Lord for this church. But anyway, back then we were having church at PIBC. And one of my former students showed up after church. Um, you know, the kind that was a troubled student, gave you a hard time. And he was one of the worst. And this guy showed up after church. And it was like, whoa, you know. And so I shared with him. Uh, a little bit of the gospel and I said you want to go to heaven and he said yes so I said well let me lead you in a prayer repeat after me and you can go to heaven so he said shoots so I said the prayer he repeat after me and after he prayed the prayer he said oh is that all oh that was easy and then he walked away and that bothered me for years you can't you can't believe how many years that bothered me I scratched my head and I said, what was wrong with this picture? This guy, I just led him to a sinner's prayer and he, and he believes he's gonna go to heaven and I thought that's what I needed to do. And I just couldn't put my finger on it. Well today, it is my hope that this message will challenge you, encourage you and cause you to examine if you are really saved and going to heaven we will see what jesus and the bible has to say on this subject and um, it's interesting that nowhere in the bible is there a sinner's prayer 
nowhere in the Bible does it say, say this prayer, repeat, and you're going to go to heaven. And so I want you to open your Bibles uh, now to Luke 19. We're going to look at the story of Zacchaeus in chapter 19. And we're going to see what the Bible and Jesus has to say about the subject of going to heaven, salvation, eternal life, and being saved. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is holy and true. Thank you for being our king. Lord, help us to have eyes to see what you want us to see today. Help us to have a heart that would receive anything you have to say to us. And we commit this morning to you that you, as our king, would have your way. So bring truth and conviction. Open our eyes. And we thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Zacchaeus, you know the story because you know the song, right? Who was Zacchaeus? The Bible says he was a wee little man. I'll try this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And the Lord said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for today I'm going to your house. Remember? Okay. Well, this is a story we're going to look at today. All right? And, uh, all right, let's start in verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. All right, uh, let's think about that. Where was Jesus coming from? He says Jesus was passing through Jericho. Well, he came from Samaria, and I want you to imagine a triangle. Okay, so Samaria is on the top, and, and, and Jesus is actually going to end up in Jerusalem, which is just south. But he detours to Jericho. Okay, and he's passing through Jericho, but it's off the beaten path. So he goes from the top of the triangle down to this side to get to Jerusalem. So it was intentional that Jesus went to Jericho. It wasn't by mistake. If he wanted to just get to Jericho, he would just go from point A to B. But he detoured to Jericho, verse 1. And it says, Jesus entered, passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. All right, so let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about Zacchaeus. Tax collector. What's so bad about a tax collector? Well, um, it's tax season. Do we like to pay taxes? No. Okay. But for Zacchaeus, it was even worse because he was the guy that was collecting taxes. Now Zacchaeus was a Jew, okay? But to be a tax collector, he was working not for the Jewish people, he was working for the Roman Empire who controlled the Jews in the first century. See, Jerusalem and all the Jews were living under the control of the Roman Empire. But to be a tax collector, you kind of turning your back on your own people, the Jews, and working for the opposition, the Roman government, because those are who were collecting the taxes. So you got Zacchaeus, see, being a tax guy, uh, that's just kind of bad rap to begin with. But now you're turning your back on your own people. But then in verse two, it also says that he was rich. How did he get rich? It's because he collected more than what he's supposed to. He was padding his pocketbook, right? So if he was supposed to collect X amount, oh, he added more. But Zacchaeus wasn't just a tax collector. What does it say? He was a chief tax collector. Whoa, now that's even worse. I mean, he's like the godfather of this thing, right? <laughs> I mean, he's the big honcho. And so, Zacchaeus, in verse 2, he was hated. He was despised. Interesting. His name, Zacchaeus, means righteous one. Means pure. 
how you figure? The people must have had a heyday with his name, right? You, the righteous one? Everybody knew Zacchaeus was a crook. He ripped people off. Everybody knew it. And nobody liked him. He was despised and hated. Talking about names. You know our dog. We got our dog living in our house with us, yeah? And when we first got the dog, somehow her name was Sassy. I don't know. I never name him, but that was the name. Uh, we Somebody in our house named him. This dog is Sassy. In fact, we had one name tag with Sassy on it. And then later on, the family say, hey, we're going to change the name because this dog living up to her name. <laughs> so we changed her name from Sassy to Pono. In Hawaiian, Pono means what? Doing the right thing. Hey, you know what? She's still sassy. <laughs> so the name is interesting. And Zacchaeus had his name meaning the righteous one. Okay. Now, um, why? There were four real reasons why Zacchaeus was hated and was despised. Number one, I'll give you four reasons. Number one, because. To be a tax collector, you could not follow the Jewish laws. Number two, he was working for the IRS, um, you know, and uh, and again, hey, we're still paying for the rail, by the way. <laughs> so we're still paying our taxes, and that ain't fun, right? He was working for the Roman government, and also he uh, gouged their own people. All right, verse 3. Zacchaeus was, it says there, a short man. He was of short stature. So that's important information, okay? So we got to keep that in mind. And verse 4, it says, So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. All right. It was kind of like a parade coming through, and he knew that Jesus was coming through. And he was short, and the crowd was already gathered. So for him to be able to see Jesus, who he really wanted to see, he had to climb up in this tree. I googled sycamore tree, and from the ground to the first limb, it's not that low to the ground. So Zacchaeus had to make an effort. He had to be intentional to get into that tree. So it wasn't, he really had to work to get up there, but he did, he got up there. Okay, so we got this guy going into the tree. Now, let's think about Jesus and let's think about Zacchaeus, all right? Zacchaeus already was interested in seeking out Jesus, okay? And let's think about why. Why did Zacchaeus want to see Jesus that day? So much so that he made it into this tree to see Jesus as he was going to pass by in the crowds. Well, Zacchaeus obviously had a need. The money he was making, and so much so that he was rich, the Bible said, right? Was not fulfilling. The money didn't satisfy. He was empty. Also, he had all these people, his own people, who didn't like him. They hated him. He was despised. Now, how does that feel? Oh, I'm not, not going to feel too good. The only people he hung around with was uh, his fellow tax people and formed the clique. And they all weren't liked. All right? And Zacchaeus, there was something that was missing in his life. He was empty. And all the money in the world wouldn't satisfy. All right? Now, let's talk about Jesus. Jesus came from Samaria, but he detoured to Jericho before going to Jerusalem. And by the way, why was he going to Jerusalem? Jesus came to this earth for one reason. See, Jesus is coming back for the second time. We're waiting for the second coming, right? Well, Jesus already came back, to, came the first time. And the purpose why he came the first time was to pass through this earth to save us sinners from our sin so that we can be saved 
and have eternal life and go to heaven. That's why he came the first time he passed through this earth. This time we see Jesus passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. But why? Because he is intentionally coming to save somebody. To save somebody from their sin so that this person can get saved. And that person is Zacchaeus. Jesus, all-knowing, knows that there's a sinner who wants to be saved. And only Jesus can save. And so he detours to go and meet with Zacchaeus. Let's continue. Okay, so verse 5. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must stay at your house. All right. So Jesus looks up in the tree and there is Zacchaeus and he says, Zacchaeus, you come down for today I'm going to your house. And um, Zacchaeus made haste, it says, and came down and Jesus went to his house that day. Verse 6 and 7. So he made haste, came down, and received them joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Now Zacchaeus knew he was a sinner because he was robbing people. He was cheating people. And he didn't care about people. He just wanted to take their money. And um, the Jews didn't like him because he turned their back. He was a traitor. He's working for the Roman government. And so... Zacchaeus was a pretty his life was pretty messed up he, he was he, you know not, it wasn't really working and he knew he was a sinner and and when we know that we're sinners we don't have the peace of the Lord there's um, confusion there's conflict um, and uh, we're all messed up yeah when we're in sin but Jesus intentionally comes to Zacchaeus' house that day. But it says there, all the people that were watching this, they complained. And let's talk about that for just a moment. Why were they complaining? Because they're saying, Jesus, you're the Son of God. You're the Messiah. And you're going to go to this guy's house, one of the worst guys, the sinner. You're going to go spend time with him. And the people complained. Now, Jesus, on the other hand, had a better plan. He had another plan. His plan was to come and save sinners from their sin. And... Um, so the people didn't know that. I think it's important to note here that we got to be careful because we don't know the mind of God. We don't know the heart of God. And sometimes we think we know better than God. And that's why these people were complaining because they thought they knew better than God. Why is Jesus going to this guy's house? Of all the people's homes that he could go to, why choose this guy? He don't deserve Jesus to go. But Jesus intentionally detoured to meet with Zacchaeus. I find it interesting that even in church, we sometimes think we know better than God. And we question God and we say, no, things should be done this way. Things should be done this way, uh, the other way. Our minds are finite and um, God is infinite. He knows what we don't know so we have to trust God and with by faith so that was an interesting um, thing the people complain so we have to be careful not to complain because God don't like complaining because we are complaining against God Eli mentioned when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and gone in the wilderness that was one of the judgments that was one of the problems is the people were complaining and God didn't like it and they were judged. A lot of them got swallowed up. As we journey from the high school to the property, there's gonna be tremendous amount of challenges for us. 
but we have to trust God and but we got to watch our hearts and attitudes because if we complain we're really complaining to God God why are you doing this we don't like this God I think I know better than you there's a better way we shouldn't do it this way but that's why we need to be as one and very important uh, especially during this time all right verse 8 Zacchaeus says he stood up and said to the Lord look Lord I give half my goods to the poor and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation I restore fourfold Wow that's huge what do we see here when Jesus met with Zacchaeus Zacchaeus's life changed he knew that he was a sinner he knew that he needed Jesus he knew that he cheated people and he said I'm going to give up to half my goods and if I cheated anyone I restore fourfold Wow when we have an encounter with Jesus something happens there is a life change there's a change of our hearts and our attitudes and there is fruits that we can see that there's been change go back to my student is that all I got to do oh that was easy just say this prayer oh and I'm going to heaven and I can just live and that puzzled me for years here you have a guy who thinks he's going to go to heaven but he continues to live his life the same before the prayer and after the prayer there's no change there's no repentance was there an encounter with Jesus because every time we encounter Jesus there's going to be a change see we need to examine our own lives has there been a change in my life you know my father-in-law was not a believer until he was uh, Lisa how old was he <laughs> 76 when he became a believer when he got converted but the thing that we see is fruit in his life this man is a changed man he was the one among handfuls of things that's that said Lisa and Clay I want to send you to Israel and I want to pay for it this trip out of the clear and it was the Lord I mean that plus you know his the way he treats his wife and speaks to her there's a change in the home he's not a perfect man but neither, neither is any of us but there is fruit there is evidence there is repentance this man was gonna lose everything he was my mother-in-law came in and moved in with us she couldn't stand living with him at this point because of his behavior and I remember telling my mother-in-law, I said, you see the car over there that she parked in our driveway? I said, if you change the outside of the car, but not the engine, it's still the same car. You can repaint the outside, you can body work, whatever, but if you don't change the engine, it's still the same car. And I said, it's because she wanted, she wanted her husband to be a different man for her to go back and live with him and I said unless his heart is changed he can tell you oh I promise I won't do this I'll do that I'll be a different until the heart is changed he's still the same guy all the outward things if he wants to change it's a matter of time because it has to change from the inside and I shared with my mother-in-law that we need to pray that Jesus would touch him and change his heart and we did and she prayed also to make sure that she's she's a believer and she wanted to pray to receive Jesus too and praise the Lord the Lord has done a change Zacchaeus his life has changed he said to the Lord I would give half my goods to the poor and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation I restore fourfold verse 9 and Jesus said to him today is the day of salvation today salvation has come to this house because he is a son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save 
that which was lost. Wow, that moment, you know, Zacchaeus wasn't baptized and says, because you got baptized, you saved. It wasn't because you go to church. They never went to church. He never went to church. Jesus came to his house. And after that repentance and that change, Jesus says, salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus was saved that moment, that day. So, going back to our title. How do you know that I'm saved? How do you know that you're saved and going to heaven? Has there been repentance in your life? Has there been fruit that would evidence that change? If you're living your life before <laughs> and after and there's no change, then something is wrong. John the Baptist in Matthew he was the forerunner to Jesus Christ, right? What did he say? He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And then he turned to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and what did he tell them? He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, you brood of vipers? Produce the fruits that is worthy. And that's what he told them. As we are gathered here today, is there fruits in our lives? Is there fruit in my life? Is there evidence? Is there repentance? Has there been a change? It's very possible to go to church your whole life and still not make it into heaven. Jesus says in John 17, 3, that eternal life that you know me this is eternal life the key is not about salvation the key about salvation is not about getting into heaven but about getting Jesus into you John 17 3 says and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent do you know him do you know Jesus this is eternal life. Pastor Eli always used to share about one of the most scariest verses in the Bible. And that is a good warning for all of us. Because the people were telling Jesus, haven't I done this in your name? Jesus, haven't I cast out demons in your name? Haven't I done this and done that in your name? And Jesus turns to them and says, away from me, for I never knew you. Those people are not going to heaven. Those people are not don't have eternal life. Those people are not saved. Because even though they do the religious type of things, they don't know the Savior like Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus had a personal encounter with Jesus that day. He came in contact with a holy king, a righteous God, a just God. Jesus was 100% God in the form of 100% man. Jesus was man without sin. And he came for only one purpose, is to save you from our sins so that we can go to heaven. Has there been an encounter with Jesus in your life? Very important questions. And only you and Jesus will know the answers to that. I have no clue what anybody's life is like. Who am I to judge, the Bible says. There is only one righteous judge, and that is Jesus. Church, we do have to be careful about judgment, about critical spirits within the church. It is so easy for us to judge one another, be critical to one another, and then the evidence of that is we start complaining, all of which does not please the heart of God. There is only one righteous judge, the, the judge, Jesus Christ. And we're going to stand before him one day and give an account. And so, where are you? Have you had an encounter with Jesus? Zacchaeus. He 
now becomes one of my favorite guys in the Bible. You know, as I was, you know, when I was a kid, I hear the, the song that, that I tried to sing for you, right? And I like the guy, but when I was studying about who this guy was and why people never liked him, hey, all of a sudden I kind of never liked him too. But now that God used him and he's a changed man, oh, I love the guy. Yeah. But Joseph, he's still my hero. <laughs> all right. Living the king's way is not about making the cut, but about being a disciple and making disciples. Um, one last story. Uh, my doctor told me by the end of the year, I got to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> but that was three years ago. <laughs> I tried. Um, so I go for walks. And as I walk, I try to walk. Um, during the week in the morning and as I go for walks it has become one of the most uh, joyful things for me because I look for opportunities to share my faith people walking I tell you what you want to meet nice people go walking in the morning oh everybody says hi they wave at you they smile at you and I don't even know these people right but then I use it to pray you know, Lord, send me to somebody I can share my faith with. And the Bible tells us, he who wins souls is wise. We need to share our faith, right? But I don't know who I'm going to meet that day. And so I share my faith. And I tell you what, it has become fun. It has become exciting. It has become enjoyable. There's a power and a peace that comes on you when you share your faith. When was the last time you shared your faith? You know, for years I didn't share my faith, decades perhaps. And that was a missing part of my life. Until my pastor who was on Maui shared with me, my former pastor, I was, I called him up one day and I said, hey Steve, uh, you know, I'm getting spiritually attacked, man. He said, you know what you do? You go out, you go share your faith with somebody and um, you know, and the enemy, you know, I mean, that's how you battle the enemy is you go share your faith. So after that, I went to the park. I hang up. I went to the park. I shared my faith. Oh, I was so pumped, man. I was like, praise the Lord, you know. And it doesn't mean that everybody you share with has to receive the Lord. But you're sowing a seed that somebody else may come and water, right? But you're being obedient to the Lord. Yeah. And so there was one, you know, and when I share my faith with people, what I find is 90% of them, I ask them, um, you know, when you die, will you, you know, are you going to go to heaven? Or I ask, you know, sometimes I ask questions like that. Well, I, I says, when you die, where are you going to go? They go, well, either heaven or hell. And I says, where are you going to go? They go, I hope I go in heaven. I say, um, on what basis you go heaven? They go, well, you know, because I'm a good person. 90% give me that response that I'm the good people go to heaven and the bad people go to hell. That's what they, they tell me about 90% of the responses. Um, but the problem with that is every single one of us can always find somebody we think is worse than us. So that makes all, all of us good people. <laughs> right? And so and so anyway and so you have to you know just challenge them and help them but anyway there was this one time um, I was walking and um, this guy was walking his dog so I said hey uh, tell me when you die where you gonna go he says I'm gonna go to heaven and that surprised me because that's a small percentage right so I said on what basis he goes because I have Jesus in my heart I says, oh, wow, praise the Lord. I said, you're a Christian? He says, yes. I says, oh, so where do you fellowship? He goes, I fellowship at MCC, right there next door, <laughs> that church. And I said, oh, okay, well, I go to Calvary. We're right next door to you. And he goes, hey, he goes, hey, one of our guys just married a gal from your church. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> But you know what? We really 
need to, if we're saved, then we need to live the king's way, as Pastor Eli was uh, exhorting us to, right? That there's another king, and it's Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ the king of your life? Is he your king? Is Jesus Christ your savior? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Or are you like some of those that say, I hope I will. I'm not sure. I cannot say. But the problem is, we, all of us don't have the guarantee we're going to be here tomorrow. Very important questions that we need to, to ask. right? <laughs> Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. That's exactly what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus invited Jesus into his home that day. Zacchaeus opened his heart to the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Zacchaeus knew he was a sinner. Do you know that you're a sinner? The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Zacchaeus repented of his sins and became a changed man and, and was willing to correct the wrongs in his life. And Jesus' response was, Today salvation has come to this house. Has salvation come to your house? Some of you here today might need to open that door, might need salvation. Some of you might have been in church for many years, maybe from the beginning when we started. But has there been a change in your life? Has there been repentance? The people in the crowd despised Zacchaeus. And worse yet, they despised Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house. One day we're going to stand before God. It doesn't matter what people think. Only matters what God thinks. Maybe some of you here today need an encounter with Jesus. Need to open that door. Need to confess to Jesus. Need to have a change in your life. I want to pray for you in a moment and give you an opportunity I'm going to ask every head to be bowed, every eye closed, because this is a holy moment. This is a time that will determine all of eternity for you. This is a time when you need to come before a holy God, a righteous judge, a friend, a savior. Jesus came to Jericho and he sought out just one man maybe you are that one man or one woman here today that Jesus is seeking out maybe today is the day that your life will change you will submit and surrender maybe you've been deceived thinking I'm a Christian but Jesus is not on your throne there's something else on the throne maybe today is the day you're gonna have to dethrone that and put Jesus Christ on the throne if Jesus is not Lord of all, someone says Jesus then is not Lord at all. Maybe that's you. With every eye closed and every heart bowed, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus today. If this is you, I just want you to respond. <coughs> Maybe there's someone here today that has come for the first time to say, Jesus, I want to open a door of my heart and I want to invite you in, just like Zacchaeus, who said, Jesus, I want to open a door of my house. You come inside. If that's you right now, I want you just to raise your hand. If that's you, you want to open a door of your heart. You want Jesus to come in to your heart. Is there anybody here? That's you. You want to say, Jesus, I want you come. I open a door of my heart. You come inside. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody?
anybody here that know that there is something in your life that you have to dethrone and you have to put Jesus on the throne and you've been not dealing with this serious enough but today you want to say you want to say this is the day that I want to do that I want to dethrone whatever it is and put Jesus on the throne is there anybody here that would like to respond to that raise your hand if that's you okay I see your hands here in the front the back I see your hands I see your hand on the back there okay one day we're gonna stand before God and he already knows our hearts but it is important that the Word of God speaks the truth of God to help us to live by the Word of God is there anybody else here today that would like to make a commitment to Jesus by saying Jesus I know I haven't been living the way you want me to live but today I want to make a commitment and live the King's way is that you you raise your hand I see your hand here anybody else I see your hand back there okay in, in a moment I'm going to ask those who raised your hand for any of those um, areas to stand because I want to pray for you and then we're gonna have everybody else stand and we're gonna close so for those of you that rose your hand could you just stand because I want to pray over you right now just stand where you are just stand straight up all those who rose your hands and the rest of you can join me as we pray for those who are making commitments here this morning Lord Jesus uh, we acknowledge you as God father you are so good to meet with people wherever we are at you went out of your way Lord to go to Jericho so that you could meet with Zacchaeus you could meet with Zacchaeus who had a need and his needs could only be fulfilled by having an encounter with you there are these here that are standing here Lord you know their hearts and they are making they're crying out to you first off to say Lord I have needs and I need you to meet my needs here Lord I'm convicted yes there is sin in my life perhaps I want to confess it and repent of it Lord perhaps I've been living my own way I come to church I say I'm a Christian but I've been living my own way today I want to live the King's way I want to take I want to dethrone those things in my life and I want to put Jesus on the throne today is the day Lord you see their hearts you see the commitments they're making you see their needs and it is only you Lord Jesus Holy God we pray you would minister you would meet the needs of your people who you love and you've died for we thank you and praise you in Jesus name everybody else let's stand as Jim is gonna close us in a closing song <laughs>